DMARC stands for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. I was checking for resources on DMARC in order to prepare for this video and I actually found the definition on Wikipedia to be really simple and easy to follow. So here it is. Now, first of all, also, I would like to apologize for the wall of text here. The goal is to give you the idea about the concept and the term of DMARC. So you don't really need to read it or do anything other than just take the information the way that you feel more comfortable for you. You may just want to go to the link and read it there. You might just want to listen to me read it for you. So it's really up to you to do the way that you feel more comfortable for you and how you like it for whatever time that's left in this video. So that's being said, DMARC is an email authentication protocol and it's basically designed to give the email domain owners the ability to protect their domain from unauthorized use. Commonly, this is known as the email spoofing, as you are all familiar with this and probably suffered from this. The purpose and primary outcome of implementing DMARC is to protect a domain from being used in business email compromise attacks phishing emails, email scam, and other cyber security threats and activities. Now, once the DMARC DNS entry is published, any receiving email server can authenticate the incoming email based on the instructions published by the domain owner within the DNS entry. Now, I'll show you a sample DMARC record in a bit, but let me just get rid of this wall of text before going moving on to that slide. So, if the email passes the authentication, it will be delivered and it can be trusted. If the email fails the check, then depending on the policy and the instructions held within the DMARC record, the email could be delivered, quarantined or rejected. And these three levels you can define when you are setting up the DMARC policy record. Now, DMARC extends to existing mechanisms. It depends on the SPF, Sender Policy Framework, and also the domain keys identified mail or DKIM or DKIM, whatever you would like to spell it. It allows the administrative owner of a domain to publish a policy in their DNS records to specify which mechanism is employed when sending email from that domain. So basically you decide whether you want to employ DKIM check only or SPF check only or both of them and then how the receiver should deal with the failures and a reporting mechanism as well for actions performed under these policies. So basically the receiver domain or the receiver server will check your DNS record, will retrieve the DMARC policy record and then it will evaluate it and apply whatever policy. If you decide to only allow SPF check in the DKIM record, then the receiver will only perform that check and take action based on the result without block the email then sending a report if you specify that or quarantine it and then sending the report if you specify that or just delivering that and then also send the report. So finally done with this wall of text. Now if you want to see the flow of DMARC in a little bit of a visualized way, then I have this for you. So basically when the sender sends an email from the organization server, they would have set up the DKIM record in their DNS and of course before that the SPF record and then they would need to publish the DMARC policy record. This is a sample policy record that is published there. So this record says the policy is reject and the report should be sent to this mailbox. And it, we are not specifying anything to, to, to limit the scope of checks. It means that we are looking to check against SPF and DKIM together and if any one of those fails then the reject action will be taken and the report will be sent to the organization at the end of the process. So the receiving server or the receiving end will get that email and then it will check the DNS record for that domain. It will retrieve the DMARC record, evaluate it and then apply one of these three actions whether accepting the email putting it in the quarantine or just reject it and then the report will be sent this is a very high level approach and a very high level view of the dmark evaluation process and if you want to see the report that is sent at the end of each process or the aggregate report actually that is being sent 
then I have this sample for you here let me make a zoom on this not sure if you will feel it better so this is an XML report that is being sent to the email address that you specify in the DMARC record now as you see there are a lot of stuff there first of all it starts with the report metadata and that's basically the the organization email that's sending this report then the range of this report and then you get the actual policy here so we are applying the policy against a domain called domain.com of course this is a sample it's not meant to anything then the two tags that are setting the mechanism against DKIM and SPF and I will explain those to you in a bit now then the policy on this one is set to none basically it will not take any action but if it was set to reject then you will see this as reject or if you set this to quarantine then this will be set to quarantine and then this is the percentage that means that the percentage of the emails that are being affected with this policy who will have this policy applied to them in other words if you have 100 emails that are being sent from our domain then if we set this to 100 percent then the receiver will apply whatever policy that we set here on those 100 emails if we set this to 50 percent then the receiver will apply the policy on only 50% of the emails that we send. So this is very important because in a bit I will show you a link from Google help site that will guide you on what is the best practice to deploy DMARC if you are already in production and if your users are already sending email messages and all of this. So looking at the records now, you will see the, the IP, the source IP that received the email, the count of the email, and the status of the evaluations, whether it failed or passed for either DKIM or SPF. And this is basically the same for all of the rest of the records. And this is not a big report actually, it's, it's moderate report. So this is the sample report. and the next tool that i will show you or the next two tools are very useful tools that are going to help you read this xml report so the first tool that i have for you here is called the xml to human and you know because of this thing i'm not sure if you're being happy reading or staring at this thing at all but <laughs> this thing here will help you understand the report in a more human being friendly way so all you have to do here is choose the file and then upload it the, the xml report file upload it and then you will be all set so let me choose the file so i have loaded the file at the bottom as you can see and i will click the upload button once i click the upload then it will start preparing the report for me and it will show me the report so going to upload it is going to generate the report for me and when i click view report it will give me a very nice page with the details and with all of the statistics about this and the evaluation for the spf and dcam policy and if i wanted to get more details then i can click the plus button and then i can again click you will see that the destination or the receiver in this case is outlook.com this is either office 365 or consumer outlook you click the plus button here again and you will see all of the details this is very useful and this is very great way to understand the dmark record and to get a visibility on how the evaluation of your policy is going on the second tool is also a dmark record analyzer but it is from the very known mx toolbox website this is the same process really this is the same concept however the report that you will get here is less human friendlier i would call it <laughs> so if i go to upload xml report then it's being analyzed and this is the report for me so yeah it's up to you to use whatever tool that you want from those two personally i always use this one because this is friendly and this is basically a good way to present to somebody in in a management position who doesn't understand this thing 
Now the next one is also something from MX Toolbox and it is about generating your own DMARC record if you don't know how to do it but it's very simple however if you wanted to get some help while trying to generate your record then this will help you a lot all you have to do here is just type the domain name so I am typing my domain name here hopefully I still remember the name then I'm clicking check DMARC record now it tells me that the provider is whatever and this is the suggested DMARC record that I have to create in my domain but you can customize it as well currently the policy is set to none as mentioned you can set it to either quarantine or reject then you can choose the email or the, the email recipients that will process your reports or that will receive your reports so you can just do it like this as you see now the email has been added to this one then the percentage which is the 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 way or the gradual implementation approach to apply dmark on your organization especially if you are using the reject approach here if you are starting from the scratch then you don't need to worry about it at all you just set it to 100 percent and you will be all set but if you are in production as mentioned and you don't want to cause a lot of impact on the email the production email then it is advised that you start gradually on this start by 10 percent then move it up to 20 percent as you see the number is being changed here they move it to for example 50 percent now it's 50 percent and so on so once you're done, you can just take this record and create it in the DNS zone of your domain. Now, finally, I will take you to the page on Google Help site. And this is specific to Google or to G Suite in general. And it's, it's talking about turning on DMARC and what are the requirements for that. In addition to this, it is also talking about the various syntaxes for that record and what are the explanations for each of these tags as they are calling them here. So it's really a good read that I really advise you to read it, to understand it, because it's very important to understand how DMARC work before applying that to your domain and to your organization's production email messages. As mentioned already, at the bottom of this one, you will find the guide to gradually deploy the DMARC policy slowly. And also, this is a good read. If you don't want to read the whole article, then at least I recommend that you read this section because this is a good approach and this is a good process that is explained by Google about implementing the DMARC in your organization. I actually forgot also to show you the official homepage for DMARC project or initiative or whatever they want to call themselves this is the home page and it contains some good resources and some information about dmark itself if you are looking into the very technical stuff about it then you can read the rfc you can find it somewhere in this page or on this site and you can understand how it works and what are the ins and outs of this protocol and process